happy freaking new year to folks who care about that stuff. I want to talk about the psychology of disruptive hustling. I've had this conversation over and over again in my inbox, here on YouTube, in the comment section. And it's like, I want a process. I want a system, Glendon. I don't want to know about the inner game. And there's a typical response to marginalize the inner game or to say it's voodoo or, you know, you can call me a disruptive hippie. I, I often speak of the spiritual aspects of money. Money has a spirit, and depending upon your spirit and then your relationship with money, it could be a good spirit, it could be a bad spirit, and you have people in these situations who are catching hell financially because they don't understand, and they refuse, absolutely refuse to embrace the inner game and want to continue to marginalize and not pay heed to the inner game, that psychology the mental aspects of being successful, doing something new. Hustle University Life Skills Academy. If there's a video about it, you definitely want to get in. I'm gonna say this again. You wanna get in on this now. You wanna get in on this now. I'm letting you know, you definitely wanna get in on this now. Definitely, definitely wanna do that. But on the psychology of game, inner game, mental game. There's a very close correlation between dating and sales. People like, oh no, they're totally different. No, they both involve you presenting something to someone else and wanting them to pay attention, chat it up, buy, whatever. Same thing. And that comes from the inner aspect of game, marketing, salesmanship, disruptive hustling, disruptive hippie, all that, the inner stuff is so important because I was talking to a friend who is just shocked shitless at some stuff that I pulled off. And it, it has nothing to do with, you know, Hustlers University, this is more personal. And he could not understand this. So I sat down with him this weekend and we went over it and I coached him up. I said, this is how you do it. When you get this, when you get this, when you get this response, this is what you do. Boom, 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 boom. And 30 minutes later, he was doing it. And he was just like, I couldn't believe this. And, you know, just to give you context and perspective, dude's 52 years old. He's been doing a certain thing for so long that to even introduce something new to him was a mind fuck. But I sat back and I really looked at how effective it was. He called me up today. And he was saying, man, you know, this was really nice. It was really nice. And he made me realize that I am going to have to do more personal coaching. I'm going to have to get into that on the because it's just more effective and more impactful. But all I did was increase his mental game. I want you to think about there's a dial in his mind. And I just flipped a switch. That was it. There was no heavy lifting. There was no renovation. It was just, I remodeled a certain thought process of his. And when I remodeled it, flip the switch, cosmetic remodeling, no tear down, no rebuild. He was successful in a very short period of time. So that experience totally drove home to me or I should say, deepen my emphasis on getting your mental game together that it made me redo some things. End of this month, because this is January, I'm going to do a personal meetup. And it's a paid thing. Like, if you're local and you're in Hershey University, you can come. Anyone else, you're going to have to pay at the door, however it's set up. And we're going to actually walk through the process in the mental steps of success. Because there were some things I was putting together again. And just going through this experience this weekend, I was just like, damn, I really got to do more of this. I have to do more of this. I got to do more of this because this is just really going to be much better. So that's happening. Now, I'll put details below the video, end of the video. You know how I present this stuff. So 
I was also talking to a client. And this is a client from the storage auction days who's no longer in the storage auction business. There's a lot of people jumping out. It's just not the same. And he called me up and he's like, look, you know, I'm doing this. And I'm doing this radical departure from what he was doing with storage auctions. And we sat down and he said, hey, can you help me? And I was like, sure. I, I know this business model. Sat down with him because he's local. Coached him up, coached him up, coached him up. Bam, bam, bam. Instant results, instant results, instant results, instant results. I was like, damn. So there, there's just this theme that's going on. There's just this theme. And once again, to go with the deeper emphasis of mental game. Now, I'm in okay shape compared to what I used to be, the physical specimen I used to be. I still work out, but there's much, much room for improvement. And I was out. Yeah, you know, there's a thing. Yeah, uh, just if you didn't know, if you're part of Hustle University, an email list, I'm taking Saturday through Mondays off. So if you don't hear from me, you email me eight times and Amy, she's off too. And that's part of the mental aspect because last year I made a decision to become and as efficient as possible with my process. And this is part of that efficiency. So I'm out just kicking it, just having fun. And I decide to play this game. And this is the game that I play. I was sitting at the bar. I was drinking. And this girl comes up. And I just start talking to her. You know, she's friendly. We're talking. Now, at no point do I ask her her name. Don't ask her a name. Don't ask her for a phone number. In my mind, I said, I am going to make this chick give me her name and phone number without asking for it. Now, I want you to understand this. this is, I play games like this. I'm a social scientist. I do stuff like this all the time. So to add some sweetener to it, the bartender, I said, hey, come here, come here. And I whisper it in his ear. I was like, I bet you $25 I can get this chick to give me her name and phone number and I will not ask for it. And he kind of like looked at her, right? And she starts, and this is part of the plan because I'm setting him up. And he looks at, he starts cracking up. He said, I'll take a piece of that because she's really, really cute. And we're just talking and talking and talking and talking. So I start doing completely different bar conversation. What do you do? Hey, where, what's your name? What do you do? This is what, this is where it went in. And all, this is just straight off the top of my head. I was like, hey, Let's play a game. And this is what I say to her. She said, what kind of game? I was like, a mysterious game. You know, when you meet people, you know, normally, they, you know, they ask you your names and the normal mundane stuff, right? Right now, your name is Claire. And my name is Bogart. And she started laughing. She's like, okay, that's a little different, a little different. But no, no, no. Okay, Claire. You're from England, so you gotta speak in the next 30 minutes in a British accent. And you know, she's like, is this she did she not she's coming in, she's like, uh posh or what? You know, because there's posh British um the accent and there's posh British and then there's posh, very, very, very freaking posh, right? Then you know, I am a Pakistani. I'm Bogart the Pakistani. I have a really jacked up Pakistani accent, right? So we're sitting there, and that's okay, okay. Now First of all, you 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 are like a royalty. You're a queen. And, you know, she's like going into it, going into it, going into it. And the bartender, right, he's just cracking up because he's like, I don't see how any of this shit is going to get this girl to give this guy her name and phone number. So we, we go, uh, go ahead. Not drinking. Totally sober. And this is totally sober. And it's very important. Because when you become drunk, a different part of your mind takes over. So that's why you can't take drunk overtures too seriously. So we're talking and everything, having a good time. She's laughing. Then other people are starting to get in on it, right? Because there's other folks, you know, folks talking stuff. And all of a sudden, here come the dudes. You ever notice if you got chatting up someone, the dude that didn't have the confidence to actually talk to the girl all of a sudden wants to ride your dick into the conversation. But once again, this is a game. So I start, Mike, okay, you want to play, all right, your name is Antoine the Bitch, right? 
and I did that delivery, right? He didn't like it because he knew where I was coming from and I knew where he was coming from. So we're just going on and on and on. This goes on for a while. And then, just when the game was getting juicy, everyone's having fun. I look at my watch. Oh, God, I got to go. Whose real name is Jennifer. Oh, God, this was so fun. We got to do this again. My name is Jennifer, and this is my number. Pay me, bitch. See, now, what I did was I created a situation because in my mind, I had a defined outcome before I even begin. So I got what most of the dudes who were there wanted without asking for it. Now, let's talk about middle game, middle game. And this is just sales, all kinds of things. When you get that kind of buy-in, there's no resistance, there's no hate, and they're glad to do it. So... We're sitting there, right? I'm getting up, right? She gets up. She pays her tax. She's walking me out, arm hooked up and everything. And everyone's like, hey, 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 you know. Back when I had the six pack, I had the physical body, but mentally I had a fucked up body. And it was crazy because once you learn the concepts, the percepts of mental game, and having these outcomes defined before you start, your success rate just goes up through the roof. Because I do stuff like this with my friend. And I just, how the fuck did he pull that shit off? And it's just having a plan, having a strategy, and knowing how the hind brain works. Because one, we're having fun. One, we're having a good time. And two, I wasn't doing anything creepy, strange. Well, a little strange. It was a little strange. But there was nothing offensive or crazy about it, and I got what I wanted. 